everyone, it's Steve with the DJ Lab taking a look real quickly at the new Pioneer DDJ FLX4, otherwise known as the Flex 4. This is probably the cheapest DJ controller I've ever owned. This was not lent to me. It's not a loaner. I didn't borrow it off anyone. I bought this because I'm waiting on my CDJ 3000s and my V10. And someone mentioned to me, hey man, why don't you make some videos on the cheap stuff? Because this is what people can afford. So I thought, why not? So this is just my first impressions from a guy who's always had lots of pro gear. You know me, I've had just about everything, but I've never had anything this cheap. And I'm just gonna say for the record, you do get what you pay for. These jog wheels are not too bad. They're not too loose, they're not too hard. I guess, you know, like Goldilocks would say, they're just about right. Good enough, they do the job. Pitch faders, they feel pretty cheap, but they got just enough resistance. I guess they're good enough. The person that's buying this thing, you're probably not playing around a lot with this pitch fader anyways. It's almost pointless because you have this smart fader. When you go from one track to the next, what it does, let's say you got 120 and you got 90. As soon as you start moving it, it's going to take this track, make it 120. And as you go over, it's going to then make this track into 90. It's going to turn out your base and then it's going to do a little echo out. Kind of cool. What else do we have here? Pads feel pretty good. They're squishy. They got a little bit of a click, a little bit of a tactile feel. It doesn't feel like when you move one that they all move. We've seen some controllers like that where it's like, you know, like the chocolate bar. They're all attached underneath these things feel like they're all individually kind of in there on off for the effects is really good i wish uh, the sc live 4 had have had a button this good because we all know the sc live 4 button is uh, horrendous you never know if it's on or off it doesn't click nicely but this one here works just like a dgm 900 nexus 2 q buttons feel really good play buttons they feel just like a cdj pretty much strangely enough your in out buttons are clicky. They feel good. It's interesting. They gave you this CDJ kind of feel a little bit. Q loop and call. Honest to God, it's strange that we do not have a slip mode button, but yet we get this Q loop call buttons that I've never used them on a CDJ. And I don't know anyone else who's ever used them on a CDJ, to be honest, either. You got your four beat and your echoes. As soon as you start it, as you can see, it started. You see how it didn't echo out? That's because of the smart fader. I haven't seen a way to adjust the echo out. That would be nice if I could change that in the software, but I don't see that. And then of course, we have all the smart effects. So smart effects are tied to the filter. So when you turn it off, your typical filter, and turn off that smart fader thing for a second. Turn on smart effects, and there's a whole range of these smart effects. Let me go through them real fast. Phantom echo. Reflect Echo. Uh, Mobius Echo, probably one of my favorites. Just keeps going. That's a really cool, fun one. I think I vaporize. Not too bad. Noise chopper. When you turn it to the right with the high pass filter, you don't really get the same effect, to be honest. Um, no, cyber jet. Hot mess. The jet was useless on the old mixers and it's so useless. Cyber pitch. Another useless one. Twister. Now that's kind of useful. I've done that on the RMX before. But as soon as you come out of it, it takes you out of your loop. Just to know that one. Uh, what else we got? That's it. So we got one, two. Oh, well, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight effects on the uh, smart effects. That's one of its tricks. It's got that trick. It's got the smart fader. Oh, another cool thing, of course. This is interesting. I'm running record box right now, but you see the pad effects here? 
anyone who's ever used a record box controller knows you have all these like instant gratification pad effect buttons. And you can go in there and you can customize and change them around and all that other fun stuff. Hit shift, go in the pad mode too. Just to mention, by the way, you got hot cue, pad effects, beat jump, sampler, key shift, beat loop, the pad effects too, and then the keyboard stuff. But when you're in Serato, guess what? The pad effects actually work in Serato. For the first time I've ever seen a controller that has pad effect control over Serato. I wish I had that with the S11. I wish there'd be a firmware update so on the S11 I could hook it up to Serato and have pad effects because I really do like pad effects. It's the only good thing about Rekordbox and I'm not really a big fan of using Rekordbox as a DJ software. That's just my own personal preference. It's great and all, has lots of features. I just don't use it. That's it. It's got two USB-Cs on the back of this thing. Hook it up to your computer. It does have one for power if you need to power it up for any particular reason. And I guess the main reason you would do that is there's an Android and iOS app that's supposed to be coming out. It has not come out yet. Who knows when that will be? It says soon. Soon could be tomorrow. Soon could be next year. Who knows? But the idea is when your phone is hooked up to this thing here, that you can still power up the deck and your phone and you're not chewing the battery, I guess. But I'm not really sure the point of the whole phone thing based on, I guess maybe when it's hooked up to the phone, you could then hook it up to a Bluetooth speaker. I'm sure there's gonna be lots of latencies, so I'm not sure if that's a good option or not. Beats me, it's a weird situation. We won't know until we actually run this thing. Other than that, is this a buy? You know what? I bought it, I'll make some videos on it. It's kind of cool for a cheap little controller. Like, you know, it does the job. It looks relatively nice. It doesn't look too much like a toy. The color scheme they did with the orange and everything, like it feels okay. I'm kind of glad they didn't go the RGB colorful shit because honestly, sometimes that just looks a little bit hokey. Anyways, that's it for me. If you have any more questions about it, feel free to drop something in the comments. Sorry, it was such a long video. I just kind of want to give you my initial thoughts on this thing. And um, I'm sure I missed a pile of stuff. Talk to you all later. Have a good one.